Hey everybody, welcome to Anarchy, the podcast about anime with two brothers. I'm Ben. And I look like I'm writing a letter. To who, though? It doesn't really matter. Clippy just says that no matter what. I guess that's true. You just type. You know, I met the man who uh, designed Clippy the other day. You did? What was he, he like? Writes children, he writes children's books here in the Seattle area. Hmm. But his uh, one of his uh, character designs he's most known for is Clippy. Oh, so he drew the art. Yeah, yeah, he drew the art for Clippy. For a second there, I thought you meant that you met the oh, person. Oh, designed the AI it? for it? Oh, yeah, no, that person's an idiot. <laughs> you typed a letter. Oh, it looks like you're, oh, maybe that's what it meant. It's not, looks like you're typing a letter. It's like, oh, you typed a letter into the program. So it looks like you're, you're writing a letter. It's like, yeah, yeah you're right. So I, I could totally I, see that that programmer got so much flack over the years that he just quit and started writing children's books instead. Uh, that would <laughs> be reasonable. Yeah. He's like, I'm not going to do this anymore. This is the worst. So <clears throat> I did a couple things since last we spoke. Yeah. Right. One is I watched a couple shows that I didn't get to last time we talked. Oh, sure. Just two of them. One is Happy Sugar Life. That's the one with the Yandere. Yeah, how is that? Well, so, mild spoilers for episode one. but well, That's not really a spoiler. When we originally episode. read the synopsis, I thought that the, like, the idea of the show was, right, there's an older girl, there's a younger girl, they live together, one's a Yandere. I thought the younger girl was the Yandere. Oh, is it the older girl? It's the older girl. So that's... I kind of like that more. That's slightly weird. So the first episode, find out that they're living together, and it's really troubling. Like, everything in the show is very unnerving, so you have this constant feeling of, this is so wrong. On a scale of one to heredity. (laughs) Well, I haven't seen that. Oh. Well, you should go see that. (laughs) Uh... But here's the problem with the show is okay. you do find out the older girl has kidnapped the younger girl. Like, oh, oh, at the start of the episode, it's like, oh, I found her and I've taken her in. And you sort of get the idea that, oh, maybe she's like an orphan and this older girl's taken her in and it's all nice. But you soon sort of realize that, no, she was just outside one day and found this girl and decided that's mine now. <laughs> that is now mine. <laughs> I found it fair okay. and square. There you go. The rest of the episode is dealing with the older girl getting a job, and there's lots of like internal politics of where people at the job hate her. And so you can sort of see her slide into accepting this sort of depraved Yandere, I'm going to go crazy at some point thing. Sure, sure. And so I thought that the rest of the show would be, okay, well, we're going to watch her go from I'm good at blackmail, I can capitulate to that, to... Worse and worse things as the show goes on. Ah. But at the end of episode one, you find out that the apartment that she and the little girl are living in isn't really her apartment. It's actually, oh. there was a family living there. And, oh no. And they are still there in trash bags. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy this television show. So it's like, watch this. on the one hand, okay, wow, that got really dark really fast. Kind of cool. But on the other hand, it's like, where's this show going to go at this point? It's like, you've it's already got nowhere to go, but up. It has nowhere else to go. It's or like further you've... down. Like the worst thing that could happen now is she kills the little girl. That's yeah. Cause she's already capable mm. of murder. I thought we were going to solely watch her get to that. There, point. there are fates worse than death. Uh, there may be, but I don't know. It... As, as evident, do you remember a couple weeks ago when we watched, uh, mainly abyss? The, yeah. I guess yeah, she could see, could yeah, turn into uh, a rabbit mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. Yeah. It can always get worse. The other show I watched, I had no intent of watching at all, but it was Review Starlight. It was one of like four or five oh, idol shows. Oh, different idol shows. Yeah, I think we talked about it for like 45 seconds. Yeah, sure. Said the title, said it was an idol show, moved on with our lives. But a friend of mine was like, oh no, you really need to watch this show because it's by... This particular director who's like new and he's got fresh ideas. It's done Does by he? this animation studio that's got a bunch of young talent and they're really, you know, up and at him. All right. So I watched an episode based on his recommendation. And my final assessment was this animation team is really cool and I can't wait for them to get a project that's actually worth watching. Yeah, I mean, that's probably true. 
I mean, sometimes you just got to cut your teeth on what's popular. On garbage. Well, it's it's mostly garbage. The first half. No, Are they the, just going to The first 10 best? minutes of the episode is you find out that the two girls, they were young. They promised each other they would be uh, stars together. And then one goes off to England, I guess. They don't actually say that, but one disappears. And then yeah. now it's the girls in high school. She goes to a conservatory. Let's introduce 25 characters twice in 10 minutes because that's what they do. Well, there you go. So it was 10 minutes of that. Do they tell you all of their quirks? Yes. Uh, there was 10 oh, minutes of that. There was 10 minutes of politics at lunch because they all know that, oh, I'm going to be the star. No, I'm going to be the star. Blah, blah, blah. And then, so, no, wait, hear me how, out. Here's the last 10 end- minutes. The last do they 10 minutes talk about is which end to eat a, uh, to eat a uh, cream horn. They don't do that. So it's not even no, a cute well, show. Well, then what's the point? Uh, last 10 minutes, the girl from England comes back. Surprise. She's great at everything. She knows that there can only be one star, but the other girl's still idealistic and thinks everyone can be a star, blah, blah, blah. And then the show finishes uh, with the optimistic girl going into the basement of the conservatory and finding a magical land that has a talking giraffe. Hmm. Well, that took a turn. Um, it did. I will say, though, that the animation of that last 10 minutes is phenomenal. I bet but it's it also stupid. Uh, so I would rather have her gone down there and found fake Akagi arms. Mm, they do get, like, suits, almost like Kill a Kill style. But I see. And the machinery animation for the, the suits being made is really cool. I bet. But it's not worth watching because it's dumb. It's a dumb show. Yeah. Well. Do what you can. Yeah. I'm sure it appeals to somebody somewhere. I'm sure it appeals to lots of people. So what have you been up to? Do you know Teen Titans Go? I am aware of that, yeah. Okay. So this they they did a movie of it. Okay. They did Teen Titans Go movie, and it's just like really smart, fun, and clever. I don't think I ever watched the original show. I did. Um, I did not much care for it at the time. See, it came, the original Teen Titans show... Came mm-hmm. out in 2003, which was the height of what? Good question. I was in college. Nah, it was the manga boom. Ah, okay. So, uh, guess what it was heavily inspired by? Was it the mangas? It was by the mangas. Um, to the point where it was extraordinarily irritating to oh. me. Uh, but it's formative for a lot of people. And a lot of people are real butthurt about Teen Titans Go because it is 100% Yonkoma-style gag show. Like, it is not serious at all. It is just goofy fun times. I'm okay with and that. And a lot of people are real butthurt about it not being, like, the real Teen Titans cartoon. Well, that's like the difference between Fate Stay Night and Carnival Phantasm. Yeah, it's like, come on. Also, it's superheroes. Superheroes get reinterpreted all the time. All the time. There's a there's a really good so Batman the Brave and the Bold was a like a really good Batman cartoon that was just a lot less uh, serious. It was really kind of silver agey, mm-hmm. like Adam and West style. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a really good discussion about that. Uh, they use a character called Batmite, which is like an extra dimensional Batman fanboy, to just sort of tell the audience, look. <laughs> You can absolutely do different interpretations of characters. Get over yourself. I mean, that is sort of the whole idea of literary anything. Yeah, and it's like, they really need to just... All the people who are butthurt about Teen Titans Go just need to be linked that over and over and <laughs> over again. Because Teen Titans Go is... First off, it makes Cartoon Network bajillions of dollars. And second off, is pretty smart and clever. There's some very good jokes in the Teen Titans Go movie. There do need to be more shows with clever comedy aimed at that particular yeah. demographic i mean there are absolutely fart jokes in it that's but fine I mean, there's also some there's also some very clever like deep cut jokes see i'm okay with that yeah it's very good <laughs> a lot of the jokes are like animation jokes and and meta jokes it's very clever but it's a very it's a very clever show but people are real butthurt that it's not the old Teen Titans cartoon, and instead is like a meta Yonkoma style gag show. Well, that's sad for them. They can't enjoy life. It is. Yeah, no, exactly. Oh, did you see the uh, Onions review of Mamma Mia? Uh, is this like one of their older articles? Because I feel like I have. No, no, this is the brand. It's not an article. It's a video. Oh, then I have to watch this. Oh, it is very, very good. Hold on. I should be able to find the link here. Onion reviews Mamma here we Mia. Go. Uh, it's not Mamma Mia. It's technically Mamma Mia. Uh, here we go again. Okay. I found it. Oh, hold on. I found it. 
I found it. I found it. There you go. This is, it's basically the exact same thing here. This, this could be about Teen Titans. A few moments later. That's one of the best reviews I've ever seen. It's very good, right? I'm for it. Not everything needs to be Schindler's List. No, it doesn't. But sometimes it is. Uh, only other thing I really did of consequence was I finished a book that your wife recommended to me like years ago. Oh, which one? Book Thief. Oh yeah, it's supposed to be very sad. It is a very sad book. The synopsis of that book is there's a family in Nazi Germany that hides a Jew in their basement. Yeah. It ends about as well as you'd expect. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've heard. But I, one of the interesting things about it is it's told from the perspective of death, if I recall. It is, yes. Uh, and it's also told in more of like a tale style than like a novel style. Yeah. Because he's telling you the story. And so that's good. It, it's hard to, A, recommend that book, and B, tell you if it's good or not, because it's really, really well written. Yeah. And when you are reading it, it's a page turner, but picking it up to read some more is like, do I really want to? Yeah, no, I, I know <sighs> that feeling. It's just, I'm just going to be sad. Why would I read more of this? It is a good book. I guess I can recommend people read it if they're into World War II. Yeah. And other type of things. It would have been nice, though, if they had had, like, a character that was a Nazi that, like, changed his mind at some point. But everyone I mean, was pretty fair. stark between, yep, they're always yeah. good. I mean, yep, it, always it is a young adult novel, after all. Yeah. But speaking of things that are just sad all the time... <laughs> So this week we are watching or have watched Violet Evergarden. We are having have watched. Having had watched Violet Evergarden. Uh, we're both sad now, I think. Uh, yeah, more or less. I mean, I'm not now. It's been a week since I watched it. Uh -oh. But, uh, you know, it's... Uh, I finished it more recently. It's got some, uh, some, some downers. Some well, not not really downers, just sads. A lot of melancholy in this show. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of Shigo Fumi. It is very much like Shigo Fumi. It's even yep. got the Angel of Death trope. Yeah. The synopsis of Violet Evergarden is it's about a former child soldier who was taken in by a an army officer and used as a war weapon until the end of the war, where he died, and she. Spoilers. Well, we don't know that. Well, we we assume he died. He's missing an yeah, action. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty obvious to us. The uh, <laughs> the outside. It's like, oh, he's super dead. Yeah. So he he's missing in action. Uh, and she has lost both of her arms, and she tries to find a new life for herself and figure out what he meant in his final words to her, both his order to live and his statement that he loves her. Well, and she gets robot arms. And then she gets robot arms and types letters for a living. Yeah, and then she becomes a uh, transcriptionist. Yep. A stenographer. That's, no, that's, that's a stenographer. general synopsis. She tries to find out what to do with the last things that he told her. So what was your, uh, your general impression of the show? That was very good. Uh, the first couple episodes are a little weak, but then really finds its legs after about episode oh, 04 or so. Yeah, um, I was wondering where it was going to go after, what, like episode seven, where they explore most of her backstory and she finds out the major is uh, is dead. But it went in a really good and interesting direction after that. Hmm. I would say the I same. Thought it was really solid. I, th I think the first couple episodes are a little slow. I feel like the show as a whole finished at episode nine and the last arc didn't really need to be there, but it's fine that um, it is. Yeah, well, except that we got some really good, at least like episode, What? which one's episode nine? Episode, Gosh. well, I don't want to do any spoilers, but episode nine is where certain is decisions are made. Is that where she goes to the front lines? Is that where she goes to the front lines? No, it's the episode before that. before that. Oh, well, the episode where she goes to the front lines is so good. I can't, I can't possibly say it should end before that episode because that episode is very, very well, I mean, good. As, as a story, it probably should have ended where episode nine ended. So they could have had that one before that or after that. I don't know. Yeah, I suppose. Doesn't matter. Yeah, the the last two episodes are a little like, uh, maybe maybe she should fight. Yeah. Also, the animation 
is incredible. Oh, it's so good. I mean, it's KyoAni. They have more money than anybody else. And they were in association with Netflix, so they had this giant influx of cash. Yeah, they could just do whatever they wanted, and they did. And they did. They did. They animated time lapse, okay? They animated everything. Like, everybody's hair bounces as they walk down the stairs. It's like, and their and the lip flap is just, like, perfect. Everything. And best part? It's like, come on. Best come on, part? Guys. Like, Side profiles, you- their eyes are round. I don't oh, think yeah, I, I have so. seen that in a very long time, especially from them. They're known yeah. for their moe eyes. It's like, dudes, dudes, we get it. You made Haruhi that one time, and you have more money than anybody else. We got it. Yeah, I think overall, it's... But it's very pretty to look at. I, I haven't decided if it's an 8 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily go that high. Uh, I'd do an 8. 8? I, I think it's a solid, solid B, B+. Plus. It's got some very strong themes. I don't know that it really explored them as much as it could have in the time it had. The major problem with it is that it is a... 100% internal conflict. Yes. And that is hard to get across on screen. They do do a good college try at doing it, though. They do. They do. So. But at the end of the day, like, if there's one thing that holds us back, it's that. It's the fact that it, the conflict is... And that's why the last two episodes are kind of weird, because they try to, like, bring the internal conflict into an external conflict, and it doesn't, doesn't really, really work. work super well. Yeah. But, you know, they, they gave it a go, and they did a good job of showing. Yeah. Uh, one of the... Great things I really like about it is how they show her development, not through her own eyes, because she's so standoffish and and bad at feelings, but through the way she affects others. Mm-hmm. Like how many stories like aren't about her, they're about somebody who she is interacting with. And that's really good. Yeah. That's a good way to sort of solve this problem. Yeah. So I think the consensus here is even though it's not a perfect show, everyone should probably go watch it. Because it's on Netflix. Yeah, it's really, it's really solid. Yeah, I mean, you've got Netflix, so it's free. So Everyone it costs you your time, and it's, and it's worth it. Totally. So I guess with that, we can go into all the major spoilers. <laughs> major spoilers. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> He's dead. That's He's, the major he spoilers. Dead. He died. So he I, I do want to get into that for in a minute, but I think yeah, we have sure. to talk about Violet first. Because the entire okay. story is just about her. She's the, she is the story. Yeah. No, oh, she's a really good character. Um, she is emotionally stunted, knows that she's emotionally stunted. Well, she slowly really figures out that she's emotionally stunted and works to fix it the best way she can. Mm-hmm. There's no quick fix to being like, I have been I have been forced to be a psychopath, like a true, like, I can't feel empathy type person. And she slowly learns empathy, but then she can't really express it at all well. Right. She really needs things very spelled out for her. It is a ridiculous transformation that she goes through from yeah being a child soldier doesn't even know her own name to being able to write love letters for a princess Mm -hmm. it's like that's quite a jump and i also like how long the show takes Mm -hmm. Uh, you can tell there's lots of stuff you miss in between especially after the first like three or four episodes where she's really learning the trade of being a, a professional letter writer after that, like, each episode takes place, it feels like months between each other. Yeah. And that's really good. That is good. Because it, it, it lets you know that, you know, growth is happening in between these stories. It's also good that they used her character's want to I- explore what I love you means as the launching off point to, hey, here's a job that can actually help you figure that out. And forces yeah. you to interact with a bunch of other characters. Yes, it, for, it forces you to interact with, with real people with and their real thoughts and emotions. Really deep-seated emotions that they wouldn't normally tell yeah. anybody else. This show is very Japanese, though, because, like, Western culture is so moved past letter writing as, like, a thing. Only the Japanese could make a show like this. Well, it also helps that the whole story is set in what is essentially World War One or slightly yeah. before. Yeah, World War One ish. So there's no like, but for fantasy land, it's not really a fantasy. It's kind of just like an alternate place. They have cars. I think they have radios to some extent. But there's yeah, no they like, have a couple. There's no like no radar. No, nothing like that. So it's very very simple things, and they still all the rely planes. On. All the planes are fixed wing. Fixed wing biplanes. Yeah. Well, I guess there was, Which was one good. plane that we saw that was uh, single wing. Yeah. So. 
But it's good. I, I the the putting it in like sort of a timeless interwar to World War One period really really helps. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's just a slightly alternate history type thing. It's not real world. It's it's about as real world as Full Metal Alchemist is. Yeah, it's got real world groundings essentially. Yeah, with some trappings on top of it. Mm -hmm. Violet herself, I think, ticked off every single one of my tropes that I love. It's like, I mean, that's fair. It's like, no, he may cut blonde hair, ponytail, blue eyes, angel of death, stoic beauty, tragic past. It's like every single one of these things. She just sort of embodies all of those. I, I will say that if there's one bad thing about that is she is basically just saber again. Oh, everybody has made that distinction. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yes, yes. But I mean, it is it is a valid Criticism. They are very she, much alike. She is just yes. saber, but I think uh, her outfit is even saber. It's yeah. I mean, she has saber face. The whole whole deal. She's saber. Well, saber is more determined and actually has views, whereas Violet doesn't have any views of her own, really. And not the beginning. She gets there near the end, but she's so introverted that not really expressed vocally in any sort of way. There were a couple points during the show that I felt like things didn't really make sense as far as her character sure. development. They're not really major ones. Like the, the biggest one is when she goes to that letter writing school. Yeah. I would like to see that be a little more. It's such a breakthrough. I wish it had been a little I know, better right? explored. It's like, okay, you completed the course, but you are crap at translating people's emotions into words. Uh, so you don't graduate. And then she goes off and she actually makes a friend, which was nice. I liked that part. She makes a yeah, friend too. and then writes a two sentence letter for her based on her ranting about her brother. So she writes yeah. a letter for her, hands it to her, and then she just graduates based on two sentences. One time. Yeah. I'm like, mm. I could have seen yeah, this be more like, oh, well, yeah, we'll give you another shot. Yeah. Yeah. But instead it's like, yep, you graduate. Like, what? I feel like that that's more of a time problem than anything else. Yeah. They wanted to get on to their next batch of stories. But yeah, no, I, I wish that had been a little better explored. Or had that be a, a character thing where instead of her having her never actually be able to get to the flowery side of this type of letter writing, but instead all of her letter writing is very short to the point, cuts through all of the clients. See, that's what I thought like, where crap. I thought it was going. I thought she was going to be like, yeah, or it's like, she's very good at honing in on what they're actually saying and she'll word it a little bluntly, but still like it really condenses their, yeah, I thought that was her straight their feelings. And then yeah. later on, she's suddenly writing love letters for a princess. I'm like, yeah, mm. I thought that you were going to use this particular strength in creative ways, but okay. Yeah, yeah sure. Why not? Of course, you could also argue that, well, because of her demeanor, she could have just studied a bunch of old love letters. Yes, absolutely. And, and then that's sort of the sort of incorporated. <laughs> the way that. I, that's the way I sort of view it is it's like, well, she knows she knows the form. She's not super great at really understanding why the form works, mm -hmm. but she can do it. Yeah. And I think that's probably the case because her final letter at the end of the show to the major dead or alive isn't really worded in the ways that she's written other letters. Yeah. And it's the first one she's writing for herself and it's very simple. Yes. So I think that that's probably the correct interpretation. So we'll probably talk about her some more when we get down to like themes and stuff. But what about the, the rest of like the staff at the dollhouse, which is what I'm going to call it. The dollhouse. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I mean, the dollhouse is the postal service that she, uh, she joins where mm -hmm. she is the, where she is the, uh, one of the letter writers. Um, you know, I liked them a lot. I thought they were good. They had just enough personality that you could see how they all work together. I do need to know more about the Megan A though. Yeah. It was weird that Give she didn't get Meganet her forever. own episode. I know. It's like Iris got her own episode because they went and visited her family, which was a big thing. Yeah. I don't feel like the, the other lady, I forget her name. No, but they drop so many good hints yeah. that I don't think it's needed. It's like. You know who you she is, a, and she was technically in the two episodes with the princess because she was the other doll writing for the prince. Yeah. Yep. So, so I mean, there's lots of there's lots of stuff with her that you you get through inference, but not the uh, not so with Bullcut Megane or the dude. I'm like, 
Yeah. The dude, I feel like I want to know more about him and what's going on with his high heels. That's a little weird, but okay. I think it's because he's short. Oh, yeah, that could be it. That makes sense. I think he is short. Well, he twisted his ankle once because of those. Yeah, but he's short. So he yeah, to be but tall. Iris, as a character, when you meet her, you're sort of like, yeah, I know your type. Bombastic, go get her type, but you can't really see your own flaws, etc., etc., etc. Whereas, yeah. yeah, the glasses girl, she's got all these like secrets, apparently, and Sho just sort of ignores her. Until like the very end where apparently she likes somebody in the office. Yeah, it could it could have been could have been better handled. But what do you do? Question for you, though. There's only so much time. Answer. The most senior of the letter writers at yes. the end, she reads a letter from the lieutenant colonel talking about his future daughter. Do you think they have a thing going? And Oh, absolutely. And stuff? They absolutely they absolutely did have a thing going. Yeah, I knew that they did in the past, but I'm like, do they? Yeah. Know? I think I think there is hope for a rekindlement. Because mm-hmm. when she read that, I'm like, wait a minute. Are you are you pregnant? Is that what's going on? Oh, no, I don't think that. Or is true. this just like no, a no, dream? No. Like I'm, I'm writing like, to uh, my future daughter in I- ideal yeah, terms. I, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think that is the case. But it did give me pause. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, guys. What's what's going on here? I need some more details. Dish out some of that dirt. The sweet, sweet goss. Let's see. And then we have all the other letter clients, and there were like one per episode, so. Yeah, more or less. Any that really stood out to you? You know, I was, when I saw the synopsis of the one with the playwright, Mm -hmm. just on Netflix, I was like, ah, I think this is going to be a little, little lame. But it ended up being very, very good. I liked him a lot. Oh, and maybe the saddest of the not Uh, um, war stuff with the, with the woman the terminal woman. I know, that was right? A very good episode. That episode was very good. I didn't like that episode up until I realized what the letters were for. Oh, I figured it out pretty instantly. I didn't. I, was like, I thought oh, I, know where I this thought is she going. was writing letters to different family members, and then she would write one last one for her daughter. That was my initial assessment. Oh no, no, no! I, I had I spent I had the whole episode going. This girl, holy crap! Please stop. Ugh, kids. No. But then at the end, I'm like, uh, my, oh, I feel bad for feeling like that. My air conditioner kind of cycled on right uh, right near the end of that episode. And like, uh, yeah, know, it did. Because it's been so hot here. Yeah, and then all that dust cycle on, just comes into dust the house. Just, just comes in your face. And like, you just you end up blinking a lot because you're like, oh, wow, all this dust. Yeah, it's terrible. That, that's a very good episode. And I loved how they were able to do an epilogue. I was not sure if they were going to be able to do the epilogue with just the way the show is structured, mm-hmm. but they did. And I was very happy with it. And especially then when they went back to the office sort of post epilogue back in present day where was choice it Violet was, very was well like, done. I couldn't break at all while I was there. And then she just like starts tearing up. And it's like, yes, this is good. This is the good drama. Yeah. All that internal Give me more stuff. Of this dramatic irony. Give me dramatic irony for days. I did like, I liked the princess bit. I didn't like her per se, but I liked the idea that the show was conveying that stop using the dolls, just use yourself and I can help, but you should be writing these things. I uh, didn't really care for Iris family trip. Yeah, that one was a little lackluster. Well, it was mostly lackluster because the entire time it's like, Iris, lady, are you five? Pull yourself yeah. together, man. Yeah, yeah. Man up a little bit here. Go. I I, go have those. I confessed my feelings to this guy, and he was like, thanks, but no thanks. And then you invited him to my party. I'm going to go cry in my room. Yeah, it was a little weak. Come on. A little, a little weak. Uh, Especially for someone as old as Iris is supposed to be, is a little weak. Yeah. And the fact that he shot her down, like, t- it feels like five to ten years ago. Yeah, a long like, time is- ago. This is this is weak, but I mean, it's, it's still fine. But probably the hardest letter to watch was the front lines one. Oh, Lord, that was horrible. Very good. Very good. Like, Great episode. Very bad. Here, here's what I have. All my notes for episode 11. First was this will be interesting. Violet writing letters for the same army she personally hacked to pieces. And then one more note. Well, that was just sad. Yeah, no, it's very <laughs> sad. <laughs> very good, but very sad. Oh, because you're always expecting, oh, help's going to come and he's going to pull. No, no, nope. Nope, war sucks. Yep. This is the worst. 
and then, he, then she gives a letter to the family, and it's just like even more sad. And then they thank her, which is yeah, even it's worse. Like, oh, it's like that's that that is the correct thing that real human beings do in this situation, but it just makes you feel uh. bad. <laughs> it's like you like the two saddest episodes are absolutely eleven and the one with the uh, the terminally ill mother. Oh like, yeah, those are just like, and they're not they're not saccharine. They're they're well executed. They're human tragedy is what it is. Yes. Yeah. And they're very real. They're not just sad for the sake of being sad or maudlin or any of that nonsense. They feel very real and things real people do. When I said that the show should have stopped at nine, it really should have kept those two standalone stories. Oh, it, ha- it has to. And it should have just lopped to. off those last they're two. They're too good. Last two episodes. Yeah. The thing with those two. Yeah. Yeah. I was kind of hoping that what they were going to do, like post episode nine, I guess that's where she that's where she finds out the major is is dead in that whole arc. That's the conclusion. Yeah, of that arc, she I finds assume. out he's dead and makes a decision to live anyway. Yeah, yeah, which is very good. That that like that is the well point executed. of this show. Yeah, like I really like the standalone episodes. After that, I was thinking that the last four episodes were all going to be little standalone snippets like that. Oh, that would have like been she's nice. She's coming yeah. to her own now. Mm-hmm. Um. She's coming to her own, and now she's at sort of the top of her game. So let's see a couple stories out that utilize that. Yeah. And that was good. Yeah, I would have probably liked that better. It was half there. It was half there. And then the last two episodes are just, like, they're just fine. Um, Like, they're there, but they don't... There's some good stuff, but it's nothing, like, major. I think it basically just comes down to, look, we promised you a child soldier who can still fight with robot arms. We gotta get, we gotta deliver. No, I was fine with that just in flashbacks. I was totally she's, she's okay with that. She's gotta fight with the, well, yeah, but she never fought without the, with the robot arms. Yeah, you, well. get, you can't, you can't have robot arms in the first scene in <laughs> Act 3 not fight with robot arms. Like, I mean, you just gotta do this. I guess the only thing I could come up with was, like, those two episodes really only exist for her to reconcile with the older brother. Yeah, they're, they're not like, really because they're her. not going to be. There's not going to be any other situation where those two would actually like have be forced to interact. Yeah. So. Yeah, and like again, like this is fine. They're not bad episodes by any stretch. They're just you know, they're just fine. Yeah, they're not as good as the preceding two. Oh no, not by a long shot. Going on to the story a little bit, I really am happy that the show did not do what I thought it was going to do in the first couple episodes. Like, Which was? Like, you watch the first couple episodes, and if you know anything about cliches, you're like, what's going to happen is somewhere in this show, the Major's going to come back. They're going to find him, he'll have amnesia or something, and he'll be alive. And she's going to get this reward for being such a sport during this whole thing. And I was worried yeah. up until the very last scene of the very last episode that that was going to happen. And thankfully, yeah, it yeah, didn't. Yeah, they, they, they kind of, they tease it a little bit, but then they're like, eh, probably not. They leave a door open. They leave a door open for hope for certain fans, but it's like, yeah. no. If he had no, come back, it, it would have ruined the entire show. It's the Maihime problem, right? It's not just the Maihime problem. Like, the whole point of the show is she has lost her reason no, I know, to but, live. But, but, but that is the Maihime problem. Yeah. Uh, she lost her reason Which to is live. You, 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 you've had an emotional arc predicated on, on this thing. Yeah. And you can't just undo that thing. Like, that, that cheapens your whole experience. And her whole development was trying to figure out what does love really mean in, yeah. in the context of I versus Ski. What does that mean? And how to live without orders. Basically, she has her own will. And if he had come back, any progress she would have made would have just been undercut instantly. Yeah. Well, I and I think it's okay for the final like teaser scene if the if the person she sees in the house on that beach is the major because she has already come to terms by her own accord herself and you've seen that. Maybe. In which case th- this is now okay cuz now she can interact with this person on a person to person level no longer in like the weird uh power dynamic that used to exist. Mm-hmm. And that is far more acceptable cuz now it's not so much a reward so much as I get to see a long lost friend. Yeah. And and that is that is fine and more rewarding than if it gets undercut early. If it's undercut early, then it's just garbage. Yeah. But if it's if it's kind of like a final reward's a bad way to put it in this context. If it's just like a final closure that's that's good and happy and not like not too. Yeah, because there were a couple of points where I thought that was going to happen, especially at the end of episode nine, where she's she's finally come out of her room, she stopped crying and come to herself a little bit, and she's out and she sees 
a pot of violets and sort of stands up and makes a decision. And the camera work yeah. is such that if it were any other show, it'd be like she turns around and there he is. That would be really lame. Yeah. So I'm glad it did not do that. I also like the fact that the show does not make the relationship really a romantic one at all. Oh, no, not at all. Like, you really get the feeling when when he's there dying and says, I love you. It's very much in a I love you as a daughter. I yeah. have raised you as a daughter style. Because she's like, what, 12 ish uh, at then? that time, 12 to uh, 12 to 13, somewhere in there. And that was four years ago. And if he was a major, even like World War One, four he, years ago. Yeah. End of the war was get, for we get time stamp. I think it was four years. No, uh, it wasn't four years ago. It was like a couple of months ago, like half a year, I think. Yeah. Something like that. Well, it's it, it's within the recent. Well, recent when, when he act. first finds her, it was four years ago. Oh, and she was true. like 12, 13 then. And so. No, no, because she's 14 during most of the show. No, she is told that she's about 14. Oh, well, that's fair. But given the way that she looks, I cannot believe that. And I think she's got. Yeah, like I'd pick her a bit something. older. Yeah, like if you I had, if they had never older. told me that it was like, they give me specific timestamps, like, yeah, this happened four years ago, et cetera. And just looked at her character. I'd be like, well, obviously she's in her early twenties. Well, yeah, they, they call like. her a kid. A, they, she does. They call her a kid a lot. So like I would, I would peg her given that the princess she works for is, is definitely 14. Yeah. I would peg her as, as 16 myself. That That's sort of my head cannon. Is she 16? But she doesn't look she, it. She's old enough to be, to be the way she is, mm-hmm. but still, still very much a not mature. One thing that they didn't touch on in the show that apparently is in the books oh there's books i, th- I thought this was an original animation no it's based honest. off of a couple light novels that were actually published by kyoto animation oh really so i mean so it's basically created it, they created it themselves though so it is an original ip no i think it because kyoto animation has that thing where they have a novel contest and then whoever wins that contest they animate it uh they've oh, done sure. that for a couple shows and i think this is how that came to be i'm not 100 percent uh, there are three, three light novels, three no- light novels published, uh, Christmas 2015, Christmas 2016, and then one recent one that's not numbered, um, that came out early this year. So I don't know if this is in the book or if this is a fan theory or not, but I'm going to throw it out there cause it would have been, it would have cast certain characters in different light. What I read was when she was found, she was actually found by the older brother in the Navy and she was aboard that ship. And we do get a uh, flashback of her killing people on a ship. Yeah. But the show doesn't say why. And what I read said that when she was originally captured, his men tried to rape her and then she oh. in turn killed everyone but him on that ship. And so there are know. several reasons she, that he hates her one because he blames her for her, uh, his brother's death. And then yeah. also because, He's seen what she did to his own men. See what uh, what my what I got from that flashback was that she was sent on that ship uh, as a agent of the enemy, and she killed all of her men, all of his men, but kind of got subdued somehow. Yeah, I mean, you could change it to and that then, in the in the show to make it a little less dramatic, even though and, the whole show was dramatic. Flipped, not necessarily flipped to the other side because she's just so, just follows orders that mm-hmm. not really, you don't really have to flip her, you just have to give her orders. Yeah. It would have been interesting to find out a little bit more about her backstory, but apparently nobody knows about it, so I'm glad the show didn't, like, sort of just throw out, yeah. oh, by the way, here's your whole backstory. And you don't really need it. Uh, all you need to really know is what it tells you, which is, you know, she was a child soldier who was found and raised better. D deprogrammed. Yeah. So speaking of that, there are some really strong themes throughout the show that I picked up that you normally don't find in anime, like really well-developed themes. They weren't mm. pushed as far as I would have liked them, some of them, but they were there. The biggest one is her whole motive is to find out what Aishetu means. Yeah. Specifically that phrase. And the whole show yes. is built around that phrase, not ski, which yeah. I am super thrilled to have any show that finally makes that distinction. Because yeah, it, it's, big I mean, the Japanese know because it makes sense yeah. to them. But for English speakers, at least, there's yeah. the connotation <laughs> we, we, there is completely different. 
we we have our we have our problem by only having the one word the one for word love. for like eight which, different things which is which has led to some problems mm-hmm. yeah the the word they use i is not so much romantic love although it can be it's more used as a deep human connection that's extremely intimate yeah and yes, not like it, a sexual it is, way it is deep love yeah it is deep love like one loves their wife using that word that is correct yeah uh, but one also loves their child using that word, where ski is very much, uh, at very least, crush puppy love type it's very thing. teenage type love, that kind of thing. Yes. I don't know, because I couldn't find anything on this, but I don't know what word parents use for children. I assume it's no, I, no, no. but I don't know. Uh, one would imagine. I can't, I can't imagine it not being. What's fun, though, is there are other shows where they do use the word I, but it's the, the context is lost. It's usually used in the context of like a high school show and you'll have some boy who finds the main girl or something and confesses using Aishtedu and everyone is horrified because if you use that, everyone just assumes you're insane and a stalker. It's like, well, yeah, you are not it's, old it's enough too- and you don't <laughs> even know her. <laughs> yeah, it's too deep. It's way too deep. It's like calling someone your beloved, I guess. Yeah. We don't really have a good good word for that no we don't really (sighs) Uh, yeah it's kind of bad i guess it's the difference between like like liking and like loving someone but again like it's still not quite the same yeah it's one of the few places where english comes up short we we're really bad it's like we have all these great words but then we've condensed all those different types of love into just one one. word (laughs) yeah it's bad uh Uh, one of the other things themes and i think it's like a secondary one which was like how does society and people around you deal with broken people it wasn't an explicit theme but it was there yeah no that's fair because the army obviously they're all cold bastards and they're like hey look at this broken person we'll just use her until she's uh outlived her usefulness and then you can just ditch her on the battlefield it'll be fine don't worry about it yeah bastards and then we have the major who's like the only person in the show who explicitly decided I'm going to treat you as a human being. Yeah. All well, the, I don't know. No, here, here, uh, hear me out. The major's friend, the, 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 I think the, uh, the owner of the postal service does. He does, but it's not in the same way. Uh, it's, I mean, it's that's, very that's at true. arm's length distance and he gets himself into trouble several times because yeah, of that. No, that's true. And everybody else doesn't really know what to do with her. They know that there's something wrong with her. But none of them really want to reach out and be that touchstone for her to grab onto. Especially, uh, it's evident when she goes on the train with Iris. Uh, Iris has known her for some time uh, before that interaction. And she's like, oh, this person's just so cold and weird and stuff. And Mm. it becomes evident that, yeah, she's emotionally traumatized. And she's like, oh, well, I guess I'll just not be as mean to her. Yeah, they just, I mean, they don't know how to handle it. No one does. And especially when she pulls off her gloves and shows her hands, which she's not ashamed of at all, everyone reacts the same way. Like, oh, okay. Don't talk about it. I don't know about, (laughs) yeah, let's not talk about it. Let's just, which is weird. I thought it was weird for a show about a culture where war just ended very recently. No one really knows what to do with someone who has experienced the war. Yeah. But I mean, that does sound like reality though, right? Like, a little bit, Even but I would, world, I would expect that to... other other soldiers would be around and people would at least have some indication of, oh, well, if they have had these traumatic experiences, we should treat them a certain way, not necessarily standoffish. But then other soldiers in arms maybe would have like social clubs or something. I'm not saying they should have added that, but I'm saying that it is weird that the entire culture acts like they've never seen a vet before. Yeah, that's fair. I thought her progression from completely cold and distant to what she was in the show was this interesting way of looking at how broken people deal with themselves. Yeah, she had a really great emotional arc and and her arc herself. Again, like the problem with the show, right, is that her arc ends before the end of the show. Yeah. And then they try to revisit that arc. And then it's like, well, I mean, we already kind of resolve this. Right. Because so. the whole arc is. She starts out being completely reliant on one person to the point where that person is her will. She doesn't have one of her own to trying to find meaning in a word 
to trying to find meaning in work, then finding meaning in other people, and then trying to figure out that she is also a person and can have her own will. So it's, yeah. it's this interesting progression of broken people dealing with themselves, but also everybody else dealing with the broken person. Mm-hmm. And technically, everybody in the show is broken in some way. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Because, again, like, war just happened. Yeah. So. To jump off of that, it's like also the main theme. Another main theme is loss. But that's pretty self-evident because of war. Yeah. Yeah. There are a couple characters that end up dealing with their loss, but she probably deals with it the most honest way, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, she's our protagonist, so one yeah. would hope. Yeah, that's about all there is. I don't know what else to say. It's very good. Go watch it. Go be sad. Join us in sadness. <laughs> Join us in melancholy. Yep. And also, go watch Shigofumi. <laughs> it is Shigofumi, really. It's very, very similar to Shigofumi. Very similar. <sighs> Except there's no cat. Yeah. So what should we watch for next time? Uh, I have no idea. I don't know if I want to watch another sad show. I just read a sad book yeah. and then I read a, watch a sad show. Yeah, well. I think I, mean, I need funny. Uh, we could just finally get over ourselves and do the Utakoi. <laughs> I'm fine with Utakoi. Well, wait, is that available anywhere? Yeah, it's on Crunchyroll. Okay. That's you the watch one. about historical poems. Historical poems. I do love historical poems. Okay, we can do that. Okay. So next time, I think we are going to watch something less sad (laughs) and more poetic. (laughs) Are you ready for some, like, uh, f***ing culture? (laughs) We've got culture. Wait, hang on. Do they also do the the incense game with poetry? You know, I don't remember if it's played. (gasps) Um, I think they do one or two poetry games, but I don't think they do that one. But poetry games are, like, the thing to do in Heian Japan. I, I mean, it's true. I assume it takes place in Heian Japan. Because who else would do this? Are you kidding me? Well, it's based off of real poems. Oh, that's even they, better. They, the, the, the episodes feature real life poems, and it features a lot of real historical characters. I like, I just Googled Wikipedia, and the top thing, top synopsis is, Utakoi is a quote-unquote super liberal interpretation of an anthology of 100 romantic poems by 100 poets. I, I mean, it kind of is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just like light, like here's the poems. Here's a little bit of the story around how the poem was written. And like, we'll just be cute about it. We'll not get into the nitty gritty of, hey, on era love life. Good, because that's deeply problematic. It it get real wacky real quick. (laughs) Yeah, it it, it softens it up so you can be interested in the cultural aspect of these poems without diving too deep. And so children can watch it. Problematic. Yeah. It doesn't dive deep into the deeply pr- pr- uh, problematic life of Heian Era romance. Good. I hope we don't get into the courtship r- rituals. Yeah, well, <laughs> no. we can talk about those next time. Don't worry about it too much. All right. So Best not join us next time it. for poetry on Anarchy. <laughs>